uh, the lift motor C1 uh, could drive it, but we decided to, to push it here um, on the stage. And just then, then hey there. Let's get over here so we can get a lot of feedback from the from the speakers and we like more feedback from our audience and from the speakers. Well it's two wheels and it just stands like this. So what is the lid? C1. Uh, so uh, with the lid motors what we do is we take the roaming effect the efficiency of the motorcycle and we integrate that with the safety and the comfort of the car. Um, basically you can see the two wheel fully enclosed self-bouncing motorcycle. Uh, we use gyroscopes that are basically similar to the uh, positioning of uh, CMG for control motor gyros that are on the Hubble Space Telescope, the same basic control system. Except for instead of using it for spacecraft, we're using it for a commuter. Uh, we see this as the future of transportation. This will cut 20% off of your commute uh, from the city or uh, you know, down to Mountain View. And uh, yeah, this is uh, basically a very incredibly, uh, incredibly efficient platform. And uh, you get 80% of the value proposition of a car on uh, one fourth the uh, battery pack, uh, three times, four times range, um, and an affordable price point. So uh, why we built it in this fashion, it's a hand built unibody chassis. Uh, we got the gross vehicle weight for uh, units at 100,000 units uh, per year annually. So we know how much it's going to cost uh, using AKDQ, and uh, we saved somewhere around $2.3 million in. Uh, uh, it sounds pretty amazing to me. Another thing that sounds pretty amazing to me is when I check out things on your website. This is the rolling smartphone. Right. Yes. Uh, this we're integrating uh, the, the digital lifestyle um, of the Google generation. Anyone from like a 17 uh, all the way up to 35, 37, and there's uh, there's an expectation of magic. Uh, that needs to uh, be fulfilled uh, when it comes to um, transportation. I don't think electric uh, electrified uh, drivetrains is enough. I think being able to program your phone with the same settings that would be um, on your iPhone for the uh, for your lighting setting for uh, your Wi-Fi, um, or also tuning this vehicle, um, you know, that, that should be integrated. Uh, there's a lot of other levels that I can't really talk about that in public, but um, yeah, it should be, it should be pretty fun. And now you're making on all four, and this is the only thing I can get out of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, uh, to, to, to be serious here. Um, so you mentioned already the, the customer base in uh, between 17 and 35, something like this. Is this also a customer base where you would think that they are more open to the idea of a motorcycle, where they maybe say, mm, you know what, I trust that this thing is safe because I understand gyro, as opposed to maybe another or a different uh, customer base that might not trust the two-wheeler because they couldn't believe that it um, just stands stable. Well, it, yeah, it's, uh, it does stay upright. You need a baby elephant to knock it over. Uh, the jars we have right now put out 500 foot pounds of torque. Our end goal would be 2,000 foot pounds or 1,300, depending on what our models uh, we developed actually this week. Um, so uh, this will be an untippable, safe motorcycle. So. The NHTSA here's a statistic. Any um, every day or every year you own a motorcycle that's over uh, 500 cc's, your your mortality rate goes up exponentially. Uh, if you, how many people here have owned a motorcycle or had to give up their motorcycle once they got married or had a kid? <laughs> okay, so that's over 15 percent. Uh, so we just 30 percent more than we need for our company uh, to be viable. Um, but. Um, yeah, so this is really, we're trying to make an accessible motorcycle for everyone. And if you look at uh, the advantages in a high density, um, like a uh, traffic situation, like specifically like in maybe China or India or Korea, Japan, uh, Brazil, Europe, um, you know, we're, we're really looking at the huge two-wheeler uh, two uh, market and increasing the proposition value um, from that, you know, to an underserved market that's been, you know, it's, it's existed for probably the last, like, you know, 80 years. Sounds great. Um, so obviously we see a very clean metal design here today that, that still um, some work requires. So let's look like two, maybe five years in the future where we see lift motors going. Yeah, um, so let's see, five years from now we should be in production for around over 100,000 units. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know with a bill of materials that is one tenth uh, the size of a regular car, uh, I think that's easy to accomplish at an affordable price point. 
And uh, yeah, these should be you know generally all over the road, uh, especially in the Bay Area, but most likely in like Seoul, Tokyo, um, Shenzhen, um, uh, New Delhi, uh, Mumbai, um, Paris, uh, Sao Paulo. Uh, I think that's really kind of where we're trying to hit, and I think we're going to have a really fun time marketing. So it's a lot, a lot of opportunity. Best of luck with this. Thanks a lot, Danny, for coming and the.